So as I've been studying nascent entrepreneurs, those who are pursuing an idea and hoping to turn that into some sort of venture reality, uh, I, I realized that as, as humans, we are social beings. And as a result, we're in, interacting with one another uh, on, a, on a regular basis. And entrepreneurs are not alone. In fact, almost nine out of 10 entrepreneurs have some sort of connection with, with others as they start their businesses. And my question that, that uh, motivated me to pursue this piece of research is uh, under what conditions and to what extent do, do uh, entrepreneurs collaborate with one another? And um, to what extent do their experiences, especially in employment, before starting their businesses, make an impact on how they form those collaborations? And uh, from an academic standpoint, the conceptual question is to what extent are individuals, the entrepreneurs, imprinted and socialized by their occupational backgrounds so that they take with them uh, attributes of their occupation and their employment experiences when they start their new businesses. Let's say you are in a, uh, a retail, uh, you have a retail background and you uh, interact with customers on a regular basis. And so a lot of your job is about uh, socializing with one another. Uh, it could be with customers, it could be with employees, it could be with other managers. And so a lot of your work involves that kind of one-on-one -on -one or potentially one-to-many interactions. And the question is, does that kind of characteristic in the occupation that you came from or are currently in as you start your ventures affect the way you think about working with others when you start the, the, the ventures down the road? So in this study, uh, we used a, uh, a random sample of nascent entrepreneurs uh, from the U.S. Um, the, the sample, the data comes from, come from the panel study of entrepreneurial dynamics, PSED2. And this uh, uh, sample was collected in uh, 2005. We have over uh, a thousand nascent entrepreneurs in our data. And we conducted a, a quantitative analysis uh, looking at uh, experience and different types of experience, specifically industry experience and uh, startup experience and occupational experience, and saw uh, and 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 uh, analyzed whether or not those attributes had uh, any bearing on the types of collaborations and the number of collaborators that they had in starting their businesses. We also uh, merged in data from the Department of Labor, and specifically, we use the data set called uh, ONET, which stands for the Occupational Information Network. And in this data set, we uh, were able to um, use attributes of the occupations themselves that helped us to get a more fine-grained assessment of what people did in their jobs. And, and by using those attributes, we were able to test our, our conjectures about whether certain characteristics of an occupation were associated with the number of collaborators that they uh, worked with in their new ventures. Uh, you can think of uh, perhaps a CEO or a manager of a, uh, of a department in, in an established company. Uh, you have people in those occupations who are uh, working with other people. They're delegating responsibilities to their staff or working with other employees in an oversight role. Uh, they may also have responsibilities that are more analytical in nature since they are um, responsible for managing budgets or uh, solving strategic problems or devising marketing plans that require them to do uh, a certain set of problem solving uh, or, or require problem solving skills or uh, 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 using their analytical uh, backgrounds to um, to uh, uh, conduct the work that is expected of their, their responsibilities. So the uh, the highlights of what we found are as follows. First, that experience does matter in the number of collaborators that entrepreneurs um, have when they when they start their businesses. Uh, specifically, we found that industry experience those uh, individuals with significant industry experience in the in the areas where they are going to uh, compete. Uh, were less likely to collaborate with others. And the explanation there is that they already have significant know-how and um, awareness of the, uh, the, the competitive environment and the problems that they're trying to resolve in their new ventures. And so at the early stages, they're, they're less likely to depend on others for assistance. 
However, if you're in an occupation that uh, involves a lot of interaction, so what we call interactive occupations in the study, uh, then you're more likely to work with others and collaborate with others. Um, if, if, you're in a, if you're coming from an occupation that depends on face-to-face uh, -face interactions with other colleagues or coworkers or, or interacting with customers or suppliers or other um, parties related to your work, uh, you're, you're carrying those kinds of characteristics into the new ventures that you're starting and replicating and mimicking those kinds of behaviors. Uh, and then lastly, what we found is that uh, in, uh, if, if someone has an occupation that has both interactive components and analytical dimensions to it, the analytical dimension actually strengthens that relationship between the interactive occupations and the number of collaborators you're working with. And the logic there is that if you're in an interactive role, as well as having um, an analytical requirement to the job that you're doing, most likely you are in a position where you can delegate and you can focus in on certain kinds of problem solving um, re uh, responsibilities and bring together the right people to accomplish the task. And so what we found is that those uh, uh, entrepreneurs who have that kind of combination in their occupational experience are able to uh, bring that to the uh, businesses that they start as well. As uh, the data show, and as many studies have revealed, entrepreneurs uh, will work for somebody else before starting and venturing out on their own. Here in the U.S., uh, the the uh, average age is uh, you know in the in the forties when people start their first ventures, and so that means there's considerable time working for somebody else. And the question is, if you have a, uh, a desire to start a business at some point in the future and you want to prepare yourself to have the right types of experiences to succeed uh, when you uh, eventually set out for yourself, consider uh, working in environments that allow you to gain the kinds of uh, experiences that are most valuable. And so related to our study, uh, that might mean working in environments that are interactive where you have to learn how to work together in a collaborative manner, teamwork, and other kinds of people skills. It could also mean working in a, a large company with a rotational program that allows you to uh, experience different aspects of a, of a uh, company and the different kinds of ways that you can solve problems and to gain the analytical skills that would be helpful when you actually launch your ventures. Uh, based on our research, uh, it's, it's vital that we really understand how uh, people uh, develop their experience, especially ex employment experience, prior to uh, starting ventures on their own. And because most people work for somebody else before working for, their, uh, on, uh, for themselves, uh, people can be in a uh, position to consider the types of jobs that they want to pursue. And in the context of our study, we found uh, benefits to working in an interactive occupation where you're dependent on uh, or your jobs require you to work with others and interact with others and collaborate with others, as well as analytical occupations that uh, involve problem solving, logical, deductive kinds of skills that are beneficial when you seek collaborations um, and bring, bringing on people to help you get your ventures off the ground.